Is artificial intelligence going to remove the need for investment bankers altogether? Are bankers going to be out of a job now that AI is here? What kinds of things are investment bankers going to need to do now that we live in the age of artificial intelligence? Well, today we're going to answer those questions here on Investment Banking Insights. Alright, 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 alright. Welcome to Investment Banking Insights. This is the only show dedicated to helping you learn both the technical and non-technical aspects of the investment banking process. Hello, my name is Alex Mason and I am your host and I'm a second year MBA student here at Cornell getting my MBA. Excited to join um, the industry of investment banking later this summer once I graduate, which is coming up really fast. So I'm really excited to talk to you today about artificial intelligence. I've been thinking about this a lot recently because I saw a news story on CNBC that Goldman Sachs has just rolled out an AI tool, an AI assistant to 10,000 of its employees and it's rolled out over the investment banking division. Now, the three biggest investment banks of JP Morgan Chase, Morgan Stanley, and now Goldman Sachs have rolled out artificial intelligent assistants that were built in-house for their workforce. And this is a trend that we're starting to see in smaller banks as well. So I'm really thinking now about how this is going to impact investment banking as a profession, especially as someone going into this field now for the first time. I'm wondering, how is this going to impact me? How is this going to impact my job? And we're seeing AI impact a lot of industries right now. I think we're still at the tip of the iceberg in terms of the impact it's really going to have across the economy in general. But I want to narrow this discussion to focus specifically on investment banking and how I think it's going to change things. We know that Gen AI can now write emails for us, do any sort of text-based analysis for us, and also do a lot of number crunching. But what is it going to do beyond that? The first way that I think that AI is going to impact the world of investment banking is you and I as future investment bankers are going to have to think more like managers pretty much from day one. It's not like the old days where you show up to work and as a worker, your boss gives you a set of tasks to do and then you say, okay, boss, thank you. I'm going to go do it. And then you just execute. I think because AI is here and it's becoming increasingly sophisticated, it's going to take off more of those things off of your plate anyway. Your job is going to be more to direct the work, to come up with strategy, to think like a manager thinks, even if you're not in a manager role, because you effectively have this virtual assistant who can execute on a lot of different tasks for you. So in order to bring the value, you're gonna have to think more like a manager from day one. An interesting thing about the development of AI is it's said that now AI is going to be progressing to the next step where they're going to have so-called agentic abilities. So AIs will not only be able to process information very quickly for a single task, but be able to do multi-step processes similar to how a human would. I think this is really exciting because that just means that instead of me having to use my brain and my time and focus to coordinate connecting two or more different tasks, I can just tell the AI like, hey, I want you to do this thing and here's the steps I want you to take and it can go ahead and seamlessly do all of those steps. The thing is, we have to have the clarity as bankers to understand what those steps need to be and how things need to be done in order to make sure everything is accurate. The second way I think investment banking is gonna be changed by artificial intelligence is that less time for each task is going to lead to more experimentation. And I think this is really exciting because it's really going to allow processes to be optimized. For example, a sell side M&A process. There's a series of steps we've talked about on the show here before. It's going to allow optimization of each of these steps to kind of compress the whole and make it more efficient and effective for clients and for the bankers themselves. I don't think this is actually going to save bankers time though. <laughs> I think if you're working on a slide deck, for example, you're working on a confidential information memorandum for a client, you're going to maybe produce the deck in half the time that you would before because you have technology to help you. Well, that's just going to mean you're going to produce twice as many decks in the same amount of time. It's something called Parkinson's law, which says that 
the work that you do expands to the time that you allow for it to take. And we've seen this throughout history with any technology. You introduce a new technology, it's amazing, it's incredibly convenient, but then as human beings, we naturally just wanna produce more and more because we want to provide as much value as we can to whoever the customer is. So that's gonna to lead to producing more work in less time. But I don't think that Baker's hours are necessarily gonna change because of that. One good thing about this though is the experimentation piece. If we can produce a slide deck or a model in a fraction of the time, we can produce a whole other variation of different types of work product to give our clients a broader spectrum of what we can do as bankers. And I think that's really exciting because now instead of one set of analysis that's based on just one particular set of assumptions, we can do even more sensitivity analyses on different factors. The third thing I think is gonna change in investment banking as a result of AI's development is that firms will compete more on the basis of creativity, vision, and human connection. With every technological innovation, the firms that implement it initially have an edge, in some cases a significant edge, and that's why you're seeing some of the bigger names on Wall Street really investing in this now is because they want to have a competitive advantage as AI develops as a set of technologies. But eventually, every technology eventually finds its way out. The cat's out of the bag. It's, it's out of the box. So now every firm is now going to have some version of their own AI tools to suit their needs. So that competitive edge is going to shrink and then probably disappear over time as firms implement this technology in different ways. Now, I think that because of that, you're going to see more of like a commodity, like commodification of AI technologies, at least in the basic sense. So I think because of this principle, investment banking firms are going to be working more on the non-tech things in order to differentiate, them, differentiate themselves, especially because this is a client services business. So yeah, AI can do a ton of calculations, but can it talk to a client in a way that's gonna persuade them to hire the firm for a mandate for a deal? I don't think so. It's just gonna aid in the supporting evidence that the bankers are gonna use to make their pitches. You see what I'm saying? So the human connection piece, the client services piece, the creativity, all those things have to be done by humans, and I think humans are the best suited to do those kinds of activities. So I think firms are going to increasingly differentiate themselves more on those kinds of things as opposed to saying, hey, I have the best technology for building models or whatever it is. Another thing I think is gonna change is that deals are gonna close faster. So with technology, we have speed, right? Technology allows us to do things more quickly. And I don't think we're gonna see this all at once. It's gonna happen, I think, on a task-by-task -task basis as investment banks experiment with AI and what it can do for them. So for example, part of a sell-side M&A process is due diligence, where you have to go through hundreds of documents from the seller, you have to organize them, you have to make sure everything is clear in terms of the numbers, in terms of just a lot of documentation. And I think like, some of the really, really manual tasks, like redacting documents by hand, that's gonna go away. And thank God, because I've done that before <laughs> this summer, and you know, it takes a lot of time. It takes a lot of time you could be using to spend on other types of tasks, right? So we're gonna see AI technology allow for shorter, shorter cycles in terms of different aspects of the process, and then in aggregate, that's gonna make deals close faster which is great for both the client who gets their outcome as quickly as possible and great for the investment bank because they get paid faster based on the transaction actually happening. Investment bankers will get to work on more deals. Investment bankers will get to get exposed to more deals in their teams because of the cycle moving a little bit faster because of technology. I don't think investment bankers are gonna be out of a job because of AI. I think investment bankers are going to be expected to produce higher quality work and expected to produce a higher quantity of work than they were in the past because we have these tools available now. So if your investment bank that you're recruiting for, that you're working for is using an AI tool, 
I highly encourage you to just dive in headfirst and learn as much about it as you can so that you can leverage it in your work. Um, it's kind of like keyboard shortcuts, right? Like you gotta learn your Excel shortcuts, you gotta learn your PowerPoint shortcuts. This is kind of the next level of that is what are the slight edges that you can use in your work to stand out and produce the best work possible. So that's what I got for you today here on Investment Banking Insights and I'm really excited uh, to hear from you. So thank you so much for leaving a comment, for subscribing, for liking this, wherever you're watching or listening to this. And you know, you can reach out to me. Many of you have been reaching out to me on LinkedIn. I appreciate the messages and uh, I'll help you in any way that I can. All right, I'll see you next time. Bye.